After we stop talking about nubile young girls. <laughs> it's a good word. Yeah. I warned you not to listen to that, Gets My Goat. Now look at you. Pointed down the center. Okay. So it will hear neither of us. It will hear the noise coming out of the back. Is there noise coming out of the back? It's like wind and stuff. Coming out of your back. There's wind coming out of you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. And this is another That Gets My Goat. First off, though, this is a new recording device we're using. Thanks to you. That's really cool. I'm really excited about that. You know what that sadly means? I'm going to have to get back to doing the ankle cast. <laughs> ah. Well. I have no excuse anymore. And I never really had he an excuse. He never had an excuse. excuse but, but now I'm, I don't even have that. Why did you stop doing the ankle cast? Uh, mainly because I was too embarrassed at my failures. And I didn't want to get back on there and said, yep, I failed. It's not the first time that I've pod faded on the ankle cast, though, so people should be used to it. But I totally pod faded, and uh, I'm sorry about that, folks. I will get back to it, I swear. In the meantime, we are here. And we I are guess queer. Get, get used, used to, to it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. That was so guess, awesome. Well, we, we did got, it in unison, gotta, like just like on, in books where they say they both said. We uh, we made a pact to come out together, and uh, <laughs> here we are. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, so yeah, we uh, <laughs> are talking writers' conference today. Okay. Um, we there's a writers' conference that comes here to town every year. Sadly, on Valentine's Day weekend every year, which really kind of limits the broadness of its audience, I guess, because... Not a lot of broads in the audience, kids. <laughs> yeah, but there you go. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's hard to tell your significant other, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to the writer's conference instead. And yet you did. Sort of, but not really. Luckily, this year, Valentine's was on a Sunday. This writer's conference went Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so what I managed to work out was that I would go out with my wife on Friday night. She had to actually work Sunday morning, uh, early morning, you know, so she had to go to bed really early on Saturday and again on Sunday. So we figured it would be best since she didn't work. On Saturday, if we went out Friday night, because she could stay up late enough to actually do something. So we did that, and I was free to be able to go to the conference on Saturday. But you went all three days. Yeah, but you, her day off was Saturday, and so you could have spent the whole day with her, the last Saturday you had with her, uh, and you chose to hang out with, at the conference instead? I could have spent some of Saturday with her. Explain. Because she has to go to bed early. And that's pretty early, usually. So. All right. I guess you know what you're doing. But, uh, yeah, last year I went to it by myself. A very last minute sort of thing, you know. I, I hadn't planned on going. And two or three days before, I thought, you know, I'm off Thursday. I'm going to go on Thursday. And we'll see how it goes. And I just bought a Thursday pass. Because I thought, you know, if I if I don't get anything out of it, I won't go for the other two days. But I oh, I got a ton out of it. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, snuck out of work on Friday so that I could go to that writing a novel in a uh, three months panel. Then writing a novel in ninety days, and then yeah, I spent all, all the whole day Saturday at that. And uh, and oh yeah, I was really fired up about writing and stuff. So. Like months before this thing happened, I was like, hey, why don't you come with me this year? And you kept saying no. And uh, so which was, blew my mind when you actually showed up. Well, I mean, it's hard for me. The, the only possibility would be Saturday. I knew that Thursday and Friday were out. Because, again, not only is it on Valentine's weekend, but it's also right in the middle of a sweeps month. Sweeps months are November February and May every year. So I can't do anything on those 
uh, those months because we're not allowed to vacation. And because you're too busy covering for the people that call in sick. <laughs> and so I knew it was going to be an issue for those days. So I, I, Saturday was the only one that I could commit to. Now, you went to all three days. Did you get anything special out of any of the other days that were, when I wasn't present? Um, I didn't get as much out of this year, out of the panels this year, uh, as I did last year. And now part of it was I went to a heck of a lot more this year. I tried to go to every single panel, and I would skip one each day so that I could go eat. But the rest of the time, you know, I would try and be there from the very first panel until the very last one, and... There were a lot where I, you know, I just, uh, yeah, it was nothing that I didn't already know or people re were reiterating or saying things that didn't apply to me. Like, for example, there was one that I thought you would be really attracted to called Inhuman Romance. I think it was what it was called. Inhuman Romance? I am attracted to Inhumans. Daisy Johnson I <laughs> particularly enjoy. I, well, yeah, I <laughs> Who can blame you, speaking of new biolescence, if that's a word. But, you know, you're always writing these stories or wanting to write these stories about a guy who falls in love with a ghost or a guy who falls in love with a toaster or a guy who falls in love <laughs> with a, a wood elf and stuff like that. And and I thought, hey, that's what this panel is going to be about. But it was about writing romance novels with like a woman who falls in love with a werewolf or a woman who falls in love with a vampire or a woman who falls in love with... You know, a, so a, a what you're Republican or something, and it is... was just, I was just like, oh, oh, guys, I, I misunderstood. I thought that we would be talking about like love interests uh, that love aren't interest human or romantic subplots in your book or whatever with, with this sort of thing. But it was about romance novels, and that, and I, I didn't get that. I. I you know, everybody was talking about, you know, when your your hero and your heroine end up at the end together, that, the, you know, this is what the audience should feel. And finally, I rose my ha hand. Rose? Raised. Okay. I, I did that. And I said, well, but, but what, what if they don't get together? And she said, well, they don't get together. Then it's not a romance. And I said, well, yeah, but what, you know, what if it ends tragically or they realize that they're, they can't be together and she says, I don't understand. Then it's not a romance. You know, she said it louder, like I would get it more. <laughs> and I was just like, love it when people do that. and I was like, but I, I don't, I don't understand. And somebody actually approached me and said, you're confusing romance, like the genre with a love story. Yeah. And a love story, you know, they can be separate and a love story with one can die or whatever. This is about romance books. You know, it's like the. They, the, there's a promise when somebody buys a romance that it will have a happy ending, that the guy and the girl will get together. And I was just, I had no idea, but I wished that somebody had told me that before I went to the dang panel. <laughs> Do you think you could write a romance novel? No, I could not. I mean, I'm all about yearning and uh, unrequited feelings and that sort of thing. And, and it's like, oh, shoot, you know, when he says the wrong thing and they ask to go back to square one or whatever it is, I I, I, I mean, I, I can barely write any romantic subplot in my other kind of fiction. But to, yeah, just write romance, no, I couldn't do that. Erotica, maybe. But there would still be a lot more angst and a lot <laughs> more, uh, need it! Uh, What's the matter? You never <laughs> needed a breast in front of strangers before? That kind of stuff would be in the uh, story. I think you just confused all the listeners. They've never heard that story. No, you've heard it too many times <laughs> for me to ever repeat it again. But uh, how can a romance be with a non-human and they get together and are happy in the end? That doesn't seem possible for some reason. Maybe I'm not well, understanding the, the inhuman thing, but you, maybe you know, he makes her a werewolf slugger. as well, or maybe he okay. gives up his immortality so that he can be with her, or you know what I mean. I, I have no idea. Something like that. What, what it is? About but yes, the tentacle. The, one? There are the tentacle. There are the thing. They talked about that at this panel. It's just like, yeah, if you want to be entertained sometime, check out on Amazon. Like you know, woman, T Rex. 
<laughs> romance or whatever. Like, how, and, yeah, how does a woman get together with a T-Rex and they decide to make it work? That can't... It, that, all right. I, yeah, I can't imagine either. I mean, that, that sounds like your niche erotica. Stuff that Nobilis Reed would be like, ooh, I ain't touching that. That's <laughs> deviant, guys. <laughs> That's way more than I can handle. <laughs> but, see, that sort of stuff, I, I don't know. I've, I'd like to try my hand at something like that. And the funny yeah, thing is, I... Go. try your hand. <laughs> that, that, that's old hat, guys. Cool, cool, cool hand, Luke. Luke. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I tried writing a smut story one time, an erotica story, and uh, it was on my laptop, and then my laptop was broken by me, and so it's still <laughs> on the laptop and is unretrievable. So, you know, the, that was something I tried, and who knows what would have happened. That's funny that you did that. Yeah. You still weren't cloud computing yet, huh? Have you started cloud computing? I've never cloud, cloud computing? computing. I can't imagine... You should. That's what I do. It's nice. I learned my lesson when I lost a thumb drive and was worried that I would never see several stories that I wrote again. And so now I write everything on something that I can access from any device that I use. Uh, but then again, I don't write. So there's that. And you do. So there's that. Um, but yeah, how many days in a row have you written now? If I wrote today, and I haven't, that would be 15 days in a row. 15 days. So 14 days yesterday. How many How many words do you have to write in a day for you to have meted your... Re- <laughs> okay, let me say that again. Jeez. <laughs> how many words do you have to speak before you are fluent in English? <laughs> how many words do you have to write during those days to meet your requirement of having written? Is it? Is there any? There's no. None. Does ten words count? Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, there haven't been any days that I've only written ten words, but uh, yeah, there was a night where, you know, it was the end of the night, and I thought, well, I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna do five hundred words. So I typed five hundred words into the thing, and I wrote them so fast that it was like, wow, okay, let me do that again, and. Uh, yeah, I was really surprised how fast I could write 1,100 words. And you were really surprised. You're like, really? Yeah, you did the write or die thing, and you wrote like 1,100 words in, in, f- in 10, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. That's insane. But um, That's a whole triple world word score story <laughs> in 10 minutes. But, uh, yeah, tonight, we've talked about it. As soon as we're done podcasting and I go home, I'll have to do that write or die thing. And I think I'll put... I don't know, 300 words or whatever, because I have to get up for work tomorrow. But yeah. I, but yes, it, it, the funny thing it? is, you can write a thousand words in 10 minutes, but if you had to write a hundred words exactly, <laughs> would, an hour, it would take you several days. <laughs> but the, uh, sorry, yes, well, I used to do that. I used to write these drabbles, and you'd be like, why? Why do you write drabbles? And it's been long enough i I don't know why i wrote travels (laughs) i guess in the back of my mind it was like well norm sherman will run them on the drabble cast and you know people will will know who i am um but uh yeah you would always be like why why would you torture yourself with that think of how many other stories you could have written in the time it took you to get that down to a hundred words exactly (laughs) okay sorry back to the point what Oh, okay. Other panels did you see in, in the yeah. days I wasn't around that were worth mentioning? Yeah, there were a lot of panels, and some of them were great. Sorry, none of them were great. There were a lot of panels, and some of them weren't that great. Uh, the, there were some that were useful, but the one that I think I got the most out of was called Defining and Measuring Success. And it was mostly just, hey, look, guys, you know, you can't make the goal I'm going to make a living from my writing because there's so much out of your hands there. I mean, it's something we've talked about multiple times is, you know, you have to set reachable goals, achievable goals, like a small goal, like I'm going to write a thousand words today, or I'm going to write every single day for a week, or I'm going to finish my short story, or I'm going to self-publish X or, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And and they were saying 
you know, not all of us are going to be able to retire on what we sell our book for and all that stuff. You guys have to find joy in the little things. Measure success by how something makes you feel or by how hard you worked on something and that you reached the end and all that stuff. And I thought that that was really cool. It was something that they said in several panels and, and that you and I have known for years, but they, boy, they said it over and over again. This whole, this whole conference, conference was, uh, you know, you have to treat it as a job. It has to be something that you look at, not just as a pastime or a little hobby or something that I'll do, eh, you know, in between bowel movements, but something that you just like, this is a priority and I've got to do it every single day. And that is, I even heard that in panels that I attended on the last day. And I said, wow, that really meant something to me that that really hit home. And you're like, oh yeah. And I said that in this one too. And then in this one too. And the Kevin J. Anderson one, he said this and they just kept saying it over and over and over again. And, and, but it's true. It's like they said, if you treat it like a job, you know, where the, it's like you do your job every single day or, you know, five days a week or whatever it is, then the money will come. Then success will come. Then you will get better. You know, fill in the blank. If you treat it like a job, fill in the blank. I thought that that was really, uh, I mean, it was something that I already knew. But people, you know, sometimes you have to hear something that you already knew. That's true. Yeah. That was actually something that I wanted to talk about in 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 this that gets my goat treating it as a job and i i even considered you know i could say rish outfield i hereby hire you as a writer it is now your part-time job to write and i want thousand words a day from here on out Uh, by the way you're working on commission (laughs) <laughs> um, you, you, you will be paid in whatever you sell. Uh, but it is your job and you are responsible to me to write and vice versa. You know, if, if you want to hire me, I don't know if that's, if you're interested in that, but. <laughs> well, something that, that kept being said, and, and it was the same guy who would say it. But he, he happened to be on three different panels at three different, you know, days that I went. But he talked about your backlog, your, uh, you know, the, the, the work that's not your newest work that's out there for sale. He said, that's what's going to keep you going. That's what's going to feed your family is your backlog. Every time, single time you put out a new book, okay, you'll sell some of the copies of that new book. But all the old books that you've got for sale will have a spike in sales. And then the next time you put out a book, you still have all those books plus one, and those will all have a spike. And he says, that's what sees you through the hard times. Is, and, and it goes hand in hand with what Dean Wesley Smith used to, you used to tell me that he'd say, you know, you have to have a lot of stuff out there. You have to have a 50 items out there. And then... Then maybe you'll be able to live off of your, your writing. If you have that many things for sale, then... You'll always be selling stuff. Right. You don't need a hundred people to buy the one book that you have out there. You can have three people buy this one and nine people buy that one and eight people buy this one. And the money starts to right. to come in. And I'm, I haven't reached that yet. I'm trying. I've got some stuff out there, but it's mostly short stories. But my tax uh, papers, what do you call it? What, you know, the, the envelopes that start coming in from... <laughs> The different jobs that you have. Oh, right. Your W-2s? Those, those came in. And I opened one yesterday, and it was from from Amazon. And it was it had, like, what I had made on Amazon UK in 2015. <laughs> and what I had made on Amazon EU. And what I had made from, like, Amazon Japan or whatever in 2015. And I looked and I was like, wow, I sold $7.14 worth of stuff in the to the EU. And I was just like, that's... I, I mean, it's sad. It's pathetic when I say it that way. <laughs> but, but at the same... You probably expected it to be zero. But at the same time, it's just like, wow. It wasn't zero. And, uh, you know, that that stuff is out there. I don't have to really do anything on those things that are already out there. 
just I my job should be just to put out more and more and more and see if that kind of stuff happens if if you know it's like next year I doubled it it was like fourteen dollars and something from the EU and uh, I don't know that, that kind of thing is kind of neat that just the thought of that strangers that you know speak with a different accent might buy my stuff and. And if, you know, if enough strangers, if one person in uh, Luxembourg buys something and then one person... Wasn't, in... wasn't it John Hyam who said he was, like, on vacation in France and he saw somebody wearing a Dune Steve shirt? <laughs> he said that, but I didn't believe it. <laughs> that was just Neither too cool. Neither believed it. And he, just the other day he brought it back up. He's like, see, I told you people I saw somebody in France wearing a shirt. I think it was because uh, Justin Charles posted the list of all the people who had listened to our stuff on YouTube, and somebody in France had spent some time on there. I don't know. But yeah, it's interesting, that stuff. Have you gone to any of those YouTube pages just to see if there might be, you know, really badly written comments and stuff? <laughs> I haven't checked for comments. Filled with typos and racial slurs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be the place for it. Anyhow, the guy said, you know, your backlog is what's going to keep you alive. And I thought, yeah, that's 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 cool. I, I, I'm i trying to put out more stuff, but, you know, it's, it's a slow process. And it's, uh, I mean, it's slow because it's not a priority to me. Mm -hmm. It's a part-time job, not a full-time job. Yeah, and one of the panels I went to was self-publishing. It was, I think, it was Saturday. It was the first. The, it was the day you were there, but it was the first panel you didn't. Yeah, it was go the to nine a.m. panel. I didn't make it for. I did go to the self-publishing panel right after that one, which was about marketing, which was completely not for me because you have to have something to market before you can market it. I guess, but at the same time. You probably would have tips for some people out there that have stuff. You know, they, uh, maybe I would have gotten something out of that panel if I'd gone. It's like, oh, okay. You know, I have to mark. I have to remind people that this exists. Yeah, but but oh, at the self-publishing one, they talked about just all the various <laughs> things that you have to do to self-publish. For example doing revisions, copy editing or whatever, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, formatting, you got to format it for Goodreads. You got to format it for Smashwords. You got to format it for Amazon. You got to format. And there were a bunch of other venues out there where I was just like, oh no, holy cow. And each one has their own like little way of formatting. And oh geez. And they talked about cover art and you know how you do the cover art and, and, you know, writing a, an effective blurb and, and all that, and I, and they, they didn't even touch on the audio portion, which is something I, you know, I've, I struggled to do as well. You know, I feel like that's a strength that I have, and so you know, I should eventually one day when I have a long white beard, have all of my stuff available in audio. And um, a long white beard would make you at least look like an author, because pretty <laughs> much all, at least sci-fi authors. If you're male, you've got a long white beard. It adds uh, legitimacy. Yeah. To you. If you're successful, I mean, look at like G George R. R. Martin. I mean, come on, you got to have the long white beard. Get on it. Your beard <laughs> is. I mean, you got a beard, so you're you're on your way. But you need to step up on the length. Okay. Well, I try. I try to keep it short. Uh, unlike this podcast, you need to stop trying. That's why you, if there's anything you've learned from, from this whole thing is to stop trying. <laughs> the, uh, the, the other thing that I experienced last year and I experienced just as much this year, if not more, was that they would schedule a bunch of panels that I was interested in at the same time. Yeah. And once you got there, it was just like, yay, you go to this panel, I'll go to this panel, and then we'll swap notes and spit. And I don't know that that ever happened either. So. It didn't. Uh, we wound up going to the same. I think the the one hour that all the stuff was at the same time, uh, we went to the same. That, that, that's the other thing, though. All the panels that are, were cool would be during one hour. And then 
a bunch of panels that were uninteresting would be on the other hour and you're just like, oh, I don't really want to see any of these. I guess I'll pick one, but... I wound up going to a sewing panel. I don't know how this happened. Oh, yeah. Well, no, but it was cosplay. <laughs> it was something related. about cosplay, and I thought, oh, okay, cool. Maybe they'll be doing foam armor. I don't know. Something really neat. Or at least something. And so I went to this, and it was all about, like, sewing corsets. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was just like, ah, oh, shoot. I'm on the front row. It'd, it'd look bad if I get up <laughs> and walk out of here, won't it? <laughs> so I, I did learn that if you if you get patterns from like Joann's or uh, what are they, McCall's, whatever the patterns are that you I can, think it's pronounced Michael's, not McCall's. <laughs> that you can <laughs> sew uh, like Halloween costumes with. They come in that really papery like really thin freaking like parchment or something sure and they said you should use painter's drop cloth like plastic see-through drop cloth thingies to trace the pattern off so you can cut it out so that way you don't ruin your pattern um that's the one thing i learned from that that will come in handy go right? cosplay Okay, well, yes, we went to a couple of panels that I felt like were busts. I went to a Pixar one, and it was called 20 Years of Pixar. And it had a bunch of people on the panel who liked Pixar movies. And I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. And at one point, somebody raised their hand in the crowd and said, so how how are you guys uh, qualified to talk about this? Have any of you worked with Pixar? Not a gosh dang one. Had worked with Pixar. The, the moderator had worked at Digital Domain and he had gone to Pixar a couple of times and had meetings. He'd taken and all that. the tour. And that was the <laughs> closest to having relevance and all that. And they basically just talked about what they liked in Pixar movies and, uh, you know, for the full hour. And and I was like, wow, dang, that was a shame. And every once in a while, you and I will go to a panel and I'll be like, I should have been on that panel. And yeah, I, I was like, we went to that one last time about Spider Man. And they kept asking questions like, well, I, I don't know when Spider-Man got his black costume. They, sometime in the late 70s. And I was like, uh, 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 1984 for the Secret Wars. It was Secret Wars from issue one or Spider-Man 252. And they're just like, oh, F you. So like I was saying, sometime in the past, he got a black costume. Uh, but yeah, there was one panel that was making your own, producing your own audiobook, And... It was one woman that was on the panel, and she was talking about how to, how to do the whole ACX, you know, Audible, Amazon thing, audiobook thing. And I thought, dang, I should have been on that panel. And I didn't go to it, because why would I waste an hour going to that panel? Although, you know, you never know. I might have gotten something good out of it. You might have learned about that center punch technique. Oh, fudge and punch and roll. I hate it. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I've bitched about punch and roll before, and I will again. The, the, there's just so many different aspects that you can focus on, and there were people that were super qualified, and they, they would boast. Oh, again, remember um, California Rish was born from last year's That's right. Writer's Conference. Let's, and let's, let's let him in the room for a minute. I went to one panel that was just like that, where and it was a horror panel. And, oh, it was a solid panel i really enjoyed it it was just talking about like the different levels of horror and you know they talked about that stephen king quote where you know it's like if i work really really hard i will terrify you and if that doesn't work well i can always horrify you and if that doesn't work i'm not ashamed to go for the gross out that that quote that everybody has heard of stephen king and so the guy elaborated on that and he talked about you know the, the the three levels of horror and and the first level is you might lose your lunch <laughs> and the second level was you might lose your life and then the third level was you might lose your soul and i was like wow this guy's really good and then he'd immediately say i wrote this this book where this happens and it's really scary. And then you go on the next day and he's like, one time I wrote this thing. And 
It was so self-serving that I just couldn't help but admire the heck out of this guy. I was like, <laughs> wow, you just have no shame at all. And, and I think he plugged every single one of his, uh, of his books. And it was this, you know, same guy that plugged every single one of his books last year. But, and, and yeah, and the, the, the keynote at one point was talking about this book uh, that, she, that she wrote. And then she said, it's a great book. And then she went on. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I forgot. That's how. That's where uh, California Rish came from. Yeah, that's, uh, it, it's important, the confidence, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 there, there was one panel that we both went to. And it, it got me excited, as several of the other panels have. Sexually. It's something that I want to try. Sexually. But I... I'm a little bit afraid. Sexually. Uh, the panel was called Write a Book <laughs> in, three in Three Days. days. Basically, what this woman's deal was, was she, she would plan it out, but she wouldn't plan it out too much. Um, she she would basically like give her brain the problem to figure out, and then she would just go for it and expect her brain to come up with the solution. Um... I think she was a she was romance, a romance book novelist, writer as yes. well. So there's a lot of romance novelists out there, apparently, which maybe that should say something to us that maybe we ought to start looking into that because that's where people actually make money. I don't know. But I'm oh, sorry, if you don't mind me interrupting. She had written 15 books in 2015. And I... Either she had written 12 books in 2015 and she planned on writing 15 in 2016, or she was going to do 15 again in 2016. All I know is, it was holy a, it, it crap. was a lot. Yeah. It, basically, what she does is she semi plans out her book. She, she goes through with like 24, I think she has 24 steps. You know, they're kind of like 24 chapters or whatever that are going to happen in this book. And she goes through and does this bare bones kind of structure for her novel. And then she rents a hotel room somewhere. For three days. For three days and goes and writes. And she has to get, what did, What was her, 60,000 words? Oh, I don't remember. It was, maybe it was less, but I think it was... Yeah, I think it was 60,000. It was 20,000 words a day that she had to write. And she would, she had it planned out. She had it scheduled, you know, hour by hour. I'm going to write this and this and this and this. Then I can go to lunch. Then I would come back and this and this and this. And then I can, you know, take a time off to swim in the pool and, you know, blow off some steam or whatever. Then I come back, write this and this and this and this dinner. And then, you know. There would be like little two minute moments throughout the day when she would change her adult diaper but but that was all just two minutes is all you got says here an astronaut <laughs> i don't know yeah she she said you had to go somewhere you couldn't just do it at home yeah you could you have to do it someplace where there's no distractions where there's no facebook or internet or dildos did she mention dildos or was that just uh, you know implied <laughs> She just talked about, you know, a how romance novelist. She talked about how draining it was, though. Yeah, because somebody that, said, "Well, couldn't we do it in four days, and that way, you know, it would just be a little bit easier, and you do fifteen thousand words each day instead of twenty? And she said, "No, because the third day is going to be hell." And if you still have a fourth day to come after that, you're going to hate yourself so much. Now, I'd like to try this. I don't know if I want to try the... Th I may maybe I need to go whole hog and do the three-day thing. Uh, or maybe it would be fine just to do it. Uh, one thing that she suggested to somebody who was in the audience that was like a 16-year-old or whatever, that's like a student and they can't just like rent a hotel room and go off by themselves, that they could just, you know, take a Saturday... And, you know, tell every hey, leave me alone. I'm going to lock myself in my room and hang myself. I mean, <clears throat> I'm going to lock myself in my room and write. And nobody bother me. And then you just do that, 
you know, like on three successive Saturdays or something. Which I think might be a, a that seems like so much better, better way to go about it because you could spend the whole week thinking about what you're going to write, thinking about the chapter, and it's like okay, so chapter three is we in- introduce the first obstacle, and it's like okay, chapter three, what it, what kind of obstacles? Okay, what's going on in her life that sucks, and how could it get worse? And all that stuff. Because, yeah, just what she had in her step outline was, you know, chapter one, intro of guy. Chapter two, intro of girl. Chapter three, intro of problem. Chapter four, guy and girl meet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just like a sentence. And that's going to become a whole chapter, which... It it works, I guess. I mean, that's that's an outline. That's that's fine. That's something that you could work from. But... uh, I don't know. I, my eyes glazed over, to be honest, during this thir- three days. Uh, sorry, this this novel in three days kind of thing. And at the very end of the panel, she's like, okay, well, let me see a show of hands. How many in you, of you in here think that you'll try this? And I just, yeah, there, I could not will my hand to raise. <laughs> it was like a hypnotist had told me that it had been glued down. And I was like, wow, for a minute there, I couldn't move my hand. I know, I knew it wasn't really glued. I just, oh, I couldn't move it. Yeah, I just thought, no, dude, I, I, I'm sorry. If that's what it takes, we couldn't do write a novel in ninety days, <laughs> dude. Okay, but that there's didn't a difference. Work out very well at all. There's a difference. I mean, she is write a novel in three days, but that's all you do. You don't have any other life. You don't have contact with other people. You here, we're gonna give you a. A bowl to take a dump in, and and yeah, you know what I mean. It's like and the windows there. That's where you put it out. <laughs> um, and that's different than you still have a job, you still have a family, you still have you know people that you interact with each day, but you've got ninety days to write when you're not doing all those other things. Uh, yeah, it seems like it might work. And the other thing, too, is she was saying, you know, if you're writing, I don't know, epic fantasy or something like that, you're going to have to pare down what you're doing. You're not going to get your 200,000 word or whatever oh epic fantasy Lord. book done in three days. So what you got to do is skip all the settings. Don't talk about the settings. Just action only, you know, just the, the this kind of stuff. And then you you would have to go back through a second time and like fluff it up. She did. She used the word fluff, and I, 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 I my head was in a different place. I was like, "What does fluff mean?" She's a fluffer. Yeah, well, but <laughs> I mean, fluff is something where you're just like, "Oh, you know, that the, it's it's the, there's a show and it's fluff. There's no content to it. It's all it's it's worthless cotton candy, cheesy, goopy." peepy stuff and <laughs> that's yes. what i thought fluff meant. okay it looks like we've come to the end of the show now folks what, oh, what did I say? Uh, and so i just that's what i thought fluff was you know it's just like empty calories you know what i'm saying yeah um, well that might be what it is but yeah she was saying that you would have you know if you have to you know if you expect it to be something bigger you can pare down your writing and write just the main stuff and then come back through and you know spice it up a bit with with some more description which would work i think for rish because rish does that anyways he not pairs things down but every time he comes back in he fluffs it a little more (laughs) his pillows become so fluffy yeah it's true i today i started recording my novel uh, for the audio version and into the furnace and i only got two chapters done in the you know the time I was recording, and probably added like seven hundred words to those first two <laughs> chapters, but but I think that they're better than they were before. I got to them and just added little things and uh, caught a couple of contradictions and things that you read out loud where you're like, oh, whoops, uh, you know, I just said here uh, this and I just said they were drinking this. Um, which, you know, other people would catch if I would give my work to other people. Yeah, if you were willing to allow someone else to look at it. Now, uh, in fact, the la- I think the last panel that you and I went to at the convention was giving and receiving oral criticism. pleasure. Criticism, that's right. And uh, they talked all about, like, beta readers and writers groups and 
copy editors and content editors and all that stuff. And yeah, I think I spent the whole panel texting. Did you get anything out of that panel? That, that one was standing room only. Yeah. The I only panel, as far as I can remember, that was standing room it only. It was in a pretty small room. It was the same room where the uh, cosplay thing was in. and It had only gotten hotter in there since I left and came back for the next panel. Oh, it was so hot. Uh, I don't know that I got a ton out of it. Uh, there were some things that I thought were good. Some things that were interesting where they said, you know, you need to look for this or that. When you're having somebody beta read for you. But yeah, that's, again, my problem is I don't need beta readers until I have something for them to read. I need to, to write. And... Uh, I've got this list of things that I made up. It's like the Stuart Smalley, I'm good enough. Daily affirmation? Yes, I'm smart enough and doggone it, people like me. It's not just a set of three things, though. There's several things that uh, I came up with. And I'm going to add... It's a good size. <laughs> no, go ahead. What are you gonna I'm going to add uh, that it's my job to that list of things that I need to say. And maybe uh, another thing, I'm trying to remember, there was another thing that I wanted to add to that. But anyways, it's a list of things that I need to say to myself so that hopefully I, I actually, I'm going to print them out, I'm going to stick them to the dashboard, and every morning on my way to work, I'm going to say them to myself, and every evening on the way home, I'll say them again. You know, the idea is you say something enough, you'll... Start to believe it. You'll believe it, and uh, you'll you'll work at you'll you'll actually think of those things when it comes time to make the decision. Hmm, should I just go to bed now, or should I sit down and write or die? Um, you know, I, I'm I'm adding that to my routine so that I can get on it. Um, I wanted to. I, I waited until now to... You, you've been writing for 14 days straight. You've decided it is your job and you're you're going to go for it. And uh, I haven't done that yet. I was waiting until we record this episode so that I could pledge to start doing that myself. And um, to start writing. So starting tomorrow, because it's... Uh, well, I guess it's already tomorrow... Um, but starting tomorrow, I'm going to join you in writing every day. Yesterday you said tomorrow. Oh, shoot. Do it! So I am doing it. It is my job to do it. It's my part-time job. I now have two jobs. You had one job! Um... But yeah, it, I, I'm glad that I went. I know that you were super inspired by it last year. I was partially inspired by it this year. I was inspired enough that I want to get going. I've been doing this thing where I listen to music that makes me think about the gauntlet. Um, I've been doing a lot, listen to this music a lot, and I've been thinking a lot about the story recently because of that. And um, one thing that somebody said at one of the... Uh, panels was to have lots of projects that you're working on concurrently so that if you ever get bored with one you can jump over to the other one and work on it for a while and then jump to the other one and jump back and around and is that because everybody is aged ADHD now maybe but yeah I, I have that where there's so much crap you know what I mean if I had to say, okay, there's seven days in a week, so I have seven projects, one, you know, one for each day. I could easily do that. Mm -hmm. um, Might be an interesting way to try it. I was thinking about doing at least a couple at the same time so that I can do that. I actually feel right now like going back and working on Sunny and Gray again. I've got two chapters of that story written. And I ought to uh, not let it die. 
No, you've carried it for this long. It would be really, really, it would, it would be a shame. It would be a shit show. Wait, that was, sorry, that was the other episode. It would be Yakov Smirnov (laughs) opening for the Spin Doctors. All right, do you have more to say? No, there there was a keynote that, uh, that, there was a guy on my row that just kept cursing through the whole keynote. And I wanted to mention that, but now I won't. <laughs> All right, then. I, I, they do other writing conferences and things like that. And I, I'd like to go to more just to be around other creative people. Not that it, it wasn't as great as when we went to the New Media Expo when we were around other podcasters and other creative people in that way. Because that's, that's something that I feel like I am, even though we don't do episodes nearly as often as we used to i'm still i feel like i am a podcaster you know i can go mano a mano with these guys because i have a parsec award ladies and gentlemen when i would go to these panels they would talk about their body of work and you know how many novels kevin j anderson had has over a hundred novels in print and you're just like oh my gosh dude holy cow and you know that you hear something like that and it's like i've I I I I haven't even started my career. Done you know? nothing with my life. Yeah. I, why? Oh my gosh. Where's the pistol? And so, that sort of thing can be daunting. But then again, you know, it's like you have to define your own success. You're not competing with Kevin J. Anderson. You're competing with you. That's right. Yeah, it's not a competition with the others. You just got to do your own thing. And yeah, I'm I'm excited to do that. I've I've been motivated by this conference. And now it's time to get on it. Do it. And I, as usual, guys, you can always help by sending words of encouragement, by sending curses big's way, by bringing up things that we've talked about. It's like, "Hey, you once r- talked about a guy who had sexual intercourse with his car." Where where happened with that story? How come I've never read that? You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> and sometimes that works. I, I know I've told this story before, but I wrote on my blog, like in 2011, oh, I had this idea for this story. And, uh, and like three or four years later, there was suddenly a comment on that of somebody going through the blog where he said, did you ever write this? And I hadn't even thought of that story since 2011. And I was like, oh my gosh, no, I hadn't. But in that year, in like 2014, I finished that story because of that comment on the blog. And so, yeah, that sort of stuff is cool. Just to know that there's somebody out there and that they're interested or they're struggling with the same things that we're struggling with or they're inspired by the the things that we're saying. It'd be so cool to hear somebody say, hey, I finished my first novel and I wouldn't have done it without California Rish calling me a douche. Douche it! <laughs> Uh. all right well thanks for listening everybody hope you have a good week hope you write or at least read what somebody else wrote um and do it like it's your job yeah if you've got a thing that you're passionate about treat it like a job just try it just see if it changes your whole mindset there was one guy the very first panel that i went to on the very first day who works for Microsoft. And he says, you know, it's just a soul sucking job being in corporate America. And I come home, not just physically exhausted, but emotionally spent from dealing with the crap that I have to deal with working at Microsoft. And so I've found that the only way I can write is if I get up at 5.30 a.m. every day and I write before I go to work. And he says, and I do it every single day. Because, yeah, I work at Microsoft, but my job is to be a writer. And one day, if I do it enough, I will be able to quit my horrible job at Microsoft. And, it, A, it made me think, oh, Microsoft is not a good place to work. But it also is like, holy cow, 530, that's what a real writer does. You were like, hey, Microsoft might have a job opening soon once this guy quits. <laughs> once this guy takes his good. life and that of his family. Good. I, I, I better start watching for that because... All right, everybody, I've been Big Anklevich. And I've been Rich Outfield. And uh, you're going to write tomorrow. That's right. Yesterday you said tomorrow. Oh, then do it today, douche. Hey, that ain't funny, man. 
That gives my goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Making Richard a national treasure, man. Uh, the, the, there were some that were useful, but the one that I think I got the most out of was called, oh uh, shoot, what was it? Something measuring? Measuring. And something penis success. Penis contest? Well, yeah, apparently size doesn't matter. <laughs> oh. And I was just like, oh yeah, cool. And they're like, have you never heard that lie? <laughs> I say, I'm sorry, what? What did you say? And then they laughed. Um, no, uh, defining and measuring. Okay. There is nothing we won't try. Never heard the word impossible this time. There's no stopping us. Cut it out.